Hi, today we're going to talk about crossovers, what they are and what they can give us when we process signals. A crossover is a device that splits a full range from 20Hz to 20kHz signal into sub-ranges. They are called frequency bands. After splitting, we can apply an effect to each band signal and after that we mix all signals together. This approach considerably extends our possibilities. Originally, a crossover was implemented in hardware and it served for splitting a signal into separate frequency bands in a loudspeaker. Then someone thought of making a multi-band compressor. Nowadays, in a digital audio workstation, we use a crossover in the form of software. We can find it in all sorts of effects and I think it's fair to say that Melda Production is a leader in providing a full range of plugins offering this feature. Compressor, limiter, reverb, chorus, flanger, you name it, we can find a multi-band version of almost every popular effect. Simply open your plugin browser and look for names which start with M multiband. They all have the crossover. Let's look at it a bit closer. For the first demonstration, I'm going to use M multiband wave shaper. The crossover is always located on the top. To open the band's configuration window, right click on the crossovers panel. Here we can see all the settings necessary to set up the crossover. The first panel from the top is the create default bands. Here we set the number of bands we're going to use. The minimum is one. That is, the plugin doesn't use a crossover as such and it works in broadband mode. And the maximum is six. I'll choose three bands. Now let's have a look at the crossovers panel. As we can see, it got evenly divided into three bands. The first thing we usually do is setting up the crossovers frequencies. For that, hover your mouse over a vertical line representing the crossovers frequency. And when a double side arrow appears, click on it and move along the frequency axis. For fine movements, press and hold control key on your computer board. A built-in frequency analyzer can be a good help here. To select a band, simply click on its empty area. A selected band is highlighted by a specific band's color. Each band has three buttons and two sliders. The buttons are mute, solo and bypass. As one can expect, pressing the mute button mutes the band signal. The solo button allows you to hear the output of the single band. And the bypass turns off the band's effect. These buttons are essential for setting up the crossover. Two sliders that I mentioned before are the gain and pan position. The gain regulates a band signal level before it gets into the following effect. Frequently it serves as a total band plus effect volume controller. However, in some plugins, it simply duplicates an effect's input gain. For example, in M Multiband Dynamics, no matter whether you set a band's gain or compressor's input gain, the result is going to be the same. The pan position slider sets a band signal's panorama. Now let's return to the band configuration window. The next panel we're going to look at is the band management. The insert buttons on the top add an extra band relative to the band this window represents. For example, if you need to insert an additional band that will be located after the one shown on the top, then press this button.
and vice versa, to add a band before, click on that button. To delete the band, click on the Delete Band button. By clicking on the Expand button, you apply the setting of a band to an entire frequency range. In essence, you temporarily turn a multiband plugin into a broadband one. This way you can check how processing a whole signal would sound if you use a usual non-multiband plugin. Auto sets limits by analyzer is one more useful function that can lighten setting up a crossover. It takes into account the energy of a signal in the entire frequency range and splits it equally between all currently available bands. To estimate the signal's energy, this function uses the frequency analyzer's readings and if the readings are fast moving, then the energy estimation will be compromised. Thus, it makes sense to use a slow analysis or the average infinite type. To use it, select a number of bands you're going to employ. I'll pick up four. Next, select the average infinite type of analyzer and let the analyzer's graph settle down. Then open the band configuration window and click on Auto Set Limits by Analyzer button. Done. Now whether you need to use this algorithm is another story. As with every automatic function, it doesn't know what you want or need. However, sometimes it can be very handy. The clipboard panel allows you to exchange the crossover settings between different plugins. Imagine you have different multiband plugins and you want to have the same crossover settings. Or perhaps you want to try another effect on the same frequency bands. Simply click on the Copy button in the Reference plugin. Next, insert the target plugin, open its band configuration window, and click on Paste in the clipboard panel. That's all. Now, all crossover settings from the Reference plugin got copied into here. Just remember, this function copies the crossover settings only not the entire plugin. The reset panel holds buttons to reset gain and pan controllers to their default values. There also are options to reset them in all bands in one go. The crossover panel is where we select a type of crossover that we want to use. There are seven types to choose from. Some of them may look familiar, while others seem quite exotic. Last thing to mention before we go through the list is, this setting is applicable to every band. Now let's start from the top. The analog algorithm emulates the grandpa of all crossovers, an analog made in hardware type. It has no latency and it keeps transient sharp. However, this type introduces a phase shift that, in turn, distorts the signal shape. We can easily see what's happening if we compare a square wave signal before and after the analog crossover. Whether it's important or not depends on the signal itself and on the effect you are applying to it. However, it explains why playing back music through an analog crossover can increase its amplitude, though its volume stays the same. It is also the only algorithm that allows you to select a filter's slope. This parameter defines a separation between bands. The higher the value, the higher the separation. At the same time, the higher the separation, the higher phase shift, and, as a consequence, the higher distortion of a signal's shape. I'd like to emphasize that I'm talking about phase distortions, not amplitude ones. Have a listen to the effect of high slopes on this drum loop.
The next two types are the linear phase and hybrid. They both leave the signal's phase untouched, but they introduce latency. Also, the high slope artifact we observed in the previous example doesn't manifest itself here. The difference between them is the slope of filters. Both types have a very steep slope. However, the frequency response of filters of the hybrid algorithm is closer to their analog counterparts. The level is the first one out of exotic crossover types. It doesn't split a signal into frequency bands. Instead, a level range becomes divided into sublevel ranges. That is, each band works within a specific level range. The first thing you will notice is that the horizontal axis represents signal level instead of frequency. Also, now these bars represent crossover levels. You can move them in the same way as you did in the frequency crossover. There are two parameters we can set here, level and level slope. The level defines which band is currently active. For example, if it's found in the middle of the second band, as in my example, then the settings of the second band will influence the signal the most. The first and third bands will do as well, however, to a much lesser extent. The degree of crossover influence depends on the level slope parameter. The higher its value, the less of the cross influence. To demonstrate the level crossover, I'm going to use M multiband autopan. Here, the LFO of each band has a different rate, 0.25, 2 and 5 Hz correspondingly. I'm going to play a pad-like sound through the plugin. Next, I'm going to move the level parameter from the left to the right, so we can hear each band in action. Here is the level within the first band's range. Let's hear it. As you can hear, the autopan effect works with a 0.25 Hz control rate. This is the effect of the first band. The second and third bands are silenced. Now, if I place the level parameter within the range of the second band, we'll hear the pan moving faster at 2 Hz. What happened is the level of the first band was reduced and the level of the second one got raised. When I move the level into the third band's range, we'll hear the third band in action at 5 Hz and the levels of the first two bands are silenced. Thus, by moving the level parameter, we cross from one level range to another and by doing so, we activate a corresponding band. This is the function of the level crossover. You're probably thinking, that's cool, but how do you make the level parameter move according to an input signal's level automatically? To do so, simply link a follower modulator to it. Please watch the Modulator Tutorials 3 follower mode to find out all details about the follower. The next crossover is called the panorama. It tends to distribute signals between bands according to their panorama position that is shown on the horizontal axis. For example, let's create three bands. The first one on the left must process signals panned to the left. The band in the middle must deal with signals panned to the center. Finally, the signal's pan to the right must be affected by the third band. That's the idea. However, you shouldn't think of this crossover as if it possesses some kind of artificial intellect and is capable of figuring out the actual pan position of sounds. No, things are much simpler here. As an example, let me play a piece of music with pads pan to the left, percussions in the middle and solos on the right. Now, let's solo each band to check out which parts of the mix it holds.
As you can hear, the first band holds pads. However, percussion and solos can also be heard. The middle band has all three parts. The last band holds solos and a bit of pads and percussions. And so, we're dealing rather with left, mono and right channels than splitting sounds according to their panorama. Nothing wrong with that, it's just something good to know to be realistic with expectations. The mid side is one more crossover dealing with the signals spread in a stereo field. However, here a signal's position is considered in terms of the mid-side matrix. In short, the mid-side matrix converts a stereo mix into two channels. The first one, mid, unites all signals in a mix, unless they are in anti-phase. The second, side, holds all signals except mono panned to the center. The first thing to notice is that now the horizontal axis is the MS scale. On the far left is the mid, and on the far right is the side. All bands are distributed between these two poles, so to speak. Correspondingly, the far left band will deal with signals situated to the center or close, and the far right one will mostly affect signals that are on the sides. It's important to remember that signals positioned to the left or right channels will be present in both mid and side channels. So, if we want to process signals according to their pan position, which crossover should we choose, panorama or mid-side? Let me put it this way. If an individual treatment of signals on the left and right channels is your priority, then use the panorama crossover. If your main concern are signals at the center, then take the mid-side mode. And if you need both, insert two plugins in series and set the first one to the panorama and the second one to the mid-sides types. The last type we need to discuss is called disabled. Actually, it's not a crossover. This type switches the plugin into a broadband mode where each band works in parallel with the others. This type is the right choice for fans of parallel processing. For example, you can have up to six compressors working in parallel, or how about six flanger effects? One thing to remember is, because you are mixing a quantity of similar processors, the volume can quickly go up. So be ready to turn the output level down. The last panel we should talk about is the analyzer. However, this is such a big topic that it deserves a tutorial on its own. The default mode should be satisfactory most of the time. So here you have it, seven types to choose from. As a general crossover, the analog type with slopes up to 48 decibels OCT will do just fine. For mastering purposes, the hybrid is probably a better choice. And if you want to treat signals according to their position in stereo, try the panorama or mid-side mode. That's all for now. All the best.